What's going on guys? It's your boy Andy back at it again. Today I am going to uh, talk about a topic that I think is um, pretty important. So it's why you as a developer need to have your own YouTube channel. So before we begin, if this is your first time here, my name is Andy. Uh, on this channel, we just talk about various tech related topics. I've been in the industry for a few years now and I'm just sharing my knowledge as I go about the, um, the, the journey of software engineering. So please subscribe if you're in, into this type of content so you can get the latest and greatest from my channel. All right, so um, the reason why I wanna talk about uh, why you need to have a YouTube channel as a developer is that you know, when, when I was first starting out, before I knew how to write any lines of code, um, YouTube was a big inspirational source for me because um, it's not like a tutorial platform, right? A lot of people use it as a tutorial platform to learn um, different uh, tech skills from. But actually what I really enjoyed was just listening to different influencers and people that were going through the uh, tech journey, um, just talk about their struggles and also talk about um, different aspects, the highlights of their career. And that really helped me pursue um, software engineering as a career. So hopefully I can uh, make this video to convince you talented developers out there that your story is worth uh, worth sharing and also like bring to light like certain perks and bonuses of having a YouTube channel that you might uh, might not have thought about before. Okay, so getting into point number one, it is the most obvious but also the most important one, which is that you are sharing knowledge with other developers. So the reason why we're able to build all these cool web apps, all these cool projects, and uh, have all these great phone apps and games is because we're standing on top of, um, we're standing on the shoulder of giant. We are not writing anything from scratch. Most of the things that we uh, work on, uh, we use libraries, modules, and even frameworks from other developers that put their blood, sweat, and tears into making whatever product that you're uh, you're just importing and using into inside your project. So this is a very open source community. Like, if, for example, you can look at open source projects on on GitHub. Even the Android operating system, uh, the, the the basic one, was is a uh, open source project, right? So, and also if you look at forms like Stack Overflow. Developers need Stack Overflow. I think there is it's like a major meme in the community. When GitHub announced that they were gonna archive code repositories of the most important and influential um, uh, code base, uh, code repos into the Arctic Vault, um, one of the comments in, uh, on the YouTube video that uh, I was watching said, you know, what's the point if they're not gonna archive Stack Overflow along with that? Because, you know, like no one's gonna understand um, all the nuances and the bugs that, that happen along with it. So I thought that was pretty funny. Um, so yeah, as you can see, like we as, de we as developers, w whether it's like professionally or, you know, if it's some uh, college student working on their assignment, we rely heavily on um, others in the community. And Stack Overflow is like a uh, it's like a great example of that. So it's not just Stack Overflow; it's um, it's like programming blogs as well. So if you guys, I'm sure you guys might have uh, implemented like a feature that you read on a blog somewhere. So even recently, uh, writing white paper was introduced into the tech community. So before uh, writing white paper was a very academic um, thing to do, like a research paper that academics uh, that academics publish. Um, well, if they found something significant. But actually back in 2008 when Bitcoin was released, it, the white paper of it got published as well. And that really um, inspired a lot more uh, developers and software engineers to publish these papers. So the thing is there are a lot of mediums for sharing knowledge and that's totally fine. Even though if um, if the knowledge that you're sharing is the same as like something that someone else is sharing. And the reason is because diff pe different people have different learning styles. So. Like me personally, I enjoy watching YouTube videos. I enjoy someone building a project so I can see all the nuances and all the uh, nitty gritty detail that they do and, and all the blockers that they run into while they're doing it. You just don't get that experience when you're reading uh, a white paper, when you're reading a documentation of a framework or when you're reading uh, even a blog post, right? You know, like no one's gonna put up what the issues that they're gonna run into like in the, in the blog post. So, so I think YouTube uh, shines in that very well is that you get, it's a more immersive experience. You get to see what the developer is, the, the developer that's teaching you is uh, what they're doing on the screen. It helps a lot of people learn a lot better. So yeah, that's it for point number one. All right guys, so point number two is to document things you learned for yourself so that later on, if you were to forget it, you can look back at your work, uh, re remember all the things that you learned before. 
So an example that I like to give is um, about a, a couple years ago, I learned Redux, which is the state management system for React. It was not very intuitive for me. I had to go through a lot of um, tutorials, blog posts, documentation, but eventually I got uh, a React app running. So I learned Redux, but now if you tell me to implement it, I would have to relearn the material, but I would relearn a lot faster. I wouldn't have to start from scratch. But what's even better is if I would have documented my journey of learning Redux and, put, and posted it and maybe share the code that I was writing while I was learning Redux, then I can go back and look at, uh, look at what I shared with community and help myself learn better. So the reality is that we as developers, we are constantly learning. Even though your employer might force you to do a lot of um, a, a lot of work, ship a lot of code, like fix that defect and work, 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 work. But we also have to step back, take a breather and learn some things um, from time to time, especially to stay, um, stay up to date. So a lot of things that we learn, if we do not use it, we tend to forget it. So a lot of times when you learn, you have to learn with a purpose. So that's why project-based learning is really effective. Uh, but if you don't need to create a project, what you can do is create a YouTube video. You can uh, create a tutorial on a topic that you're learning. Because when, because if you if you learn something well enough to teach it to someone, then you yourself really internalize the core concepts of it. And if you need to come back um, to the nitty gritty specific details, you you always have a video that you created that at one point it fits your framework of thinking so that you can you can see and you can look at. So it, it is a more selfish point, but it is really important because we as developers learn a lot of things and forget a lot of things as well. And hopefully this, if you have an index of what you learn, you can always reference back and go back and see the technologies that you learned in the past. So that is point number two. All right, so let's get into point number three. And point number three is it helps you with your social skills. So actually these last two points are a little bit more self-help style um, points but the thing is these are really important because um, at the end of the day life is a sales pitch no matter if you're trying to get a new job you have to convince the interviewer to give you the job whether and after you get the job you have to take initiatives you have to convince um, your peers your colleagues to you know to, to take these initiatives and after you take the initiatives you have to convince your manager for a promotion and you know not just job related you also have to convince uh, you know your friends and family to do things that you want uh, to, to go to that restaurant or to convince uh, women to, to date you so at the end of the day life is a huge sales pitch so I know a lot of developers out there myself included are introverts and have a really hard time talking to people because people are weird so when you're teaching something um, that you learned you actually talk with a lot of authority so if you think about it if you're like a student you're in a classroom and the teacher is talking um, a lot of the times um, the students, you know, will respect what the teacher has to say and the whole room is completely silent because that teacher is in such an authoritative position. So the same thing can be done here when you're trying to teach people something that you know on YouTube. And, and this really helps you find your authoritative voice and that will command a lot of respect and, and help you socialize, not just your ability to talk to a camera, but also your ability to talk with others as well. And not, not that you condescend and look down on them, but it's just to speak with a little bit more confidence. And I think teaching something to someone will help with that a lot. And also it's almost 2021, like who else are you gonna socialize with? You can't go outside, you can't have fun. There's not big groups of people. So start with the camera <laughs> if you guys are bad at it. And you know, maybe you don't even have to post anything. So a lot of times you can just talk in front of the camera and see if you like it, if you, if you don't, delete it and then re-record it. It's not a huge deal. So it's a very low bar, very low risk, and it really helps you speak with more authority and uh, confidence. It's a great thing to have and it will carry over into other aspects in your life. Okay guys, so the fourth and final point I wanna get across about why you should have a YouTube channel is that it helps you stand out from the crowd. So as you guys know, the interview system for getting a tech job is broken. So you would have to pass these interview questions that you have that has nothing to do with the actual job itself. And also, uh, if you're really unlucky, you have to do like a take home project and waste a lot of time on that and you might or might not get the job. So how do you stand out from the crowd? So to give you that extra edge when the employers are evaluating you. So one way you can do that is to have to build a YouTube channel. And the reason um, it sets you apart is that build, building a YouTube channel and having an audience 
um, is something that takes a lot of time, energy, and effort. It's not something that happens overnight. It's not something uh, that you can do instantly, like submitting a resume, doing a coding challenge, and going in and um, doing programming questions. Those things companies can make you do like that, like quickly. But building an audience, not everyone has uh, is willing to do it, and also it takes a lot of time. So that's why it's uh, it's something that um, helps you stand out more. And having a channel will help employers put a face, a voice, and a personality to the resume. And if you if you took my last um, my, my last tip, shows your um, authoritative voice and your ability to take leadership and also influence people. Um, around you. So these are things that companies are looking for and I think that these are important traits that are very hard to show on a resume. So if you put yourself out there on YouTube and you build an audience, it shows to employers that you're a likable person because otherwise why would people follow you and listen to your advice? So if people know who you are and you're able to build an audience, it shows that you are a likable person and that means you are most more likely to work well with other people. Also, if you ever decide to do your own thing one day, if you have an audience, you are able to market yourself better and potentially sell your audience a product. So this is um, th uh, this is a point that a lot of people overlook, is that you know if you have people following you and if you are a, an influential person, um, companies want that. So this doesn't only apply to companies, because one of the hardest things is to it, 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 nowadays is to market. So if you have a product, but you don't market it, you're not gonna get any sales. So if you already have an audience and you have a product, then it's easier to, um, to, to recommend that product to an audience that already trusts you and, um, and, and like who you are as a content creator. So that'll do it for me today. These are the points that I wanna um, highlight and show that why you as a developer should create a YouTube channel and why it's important for you to have a presence online. So hopefully you guys took something away from this video and if you did, um, please give me a like. I would really appreciate that. Um, otherwise, give me a dislike and give me a constructive criticism on why it was disliked. Um, that's also appreciated. So yeah, um, thanks for taking the time out, uh, out of your day to watch this and take care.